Okay, friends, so you can tell by the title of this video, these are the books that I did not finish in 2020. Um, some of them were just bad and I couldn't get through them. Some of them, my audiobook library hold was up. Um, some of them I just got distracted, some of them I just lost, and some of them lost me. Um, I don't know. I may try to reread some of them, but I also might just let them drift away. <laughs> so if your favorite book is on here, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend anyone. These are just my opinions, obviously. So let's get into it. Oh, and these are in no particular order, but I think we know which one I DNF'd the hardest. Okay. <sighs> I'm like, feeling anxious because <laughs> I'm afraid someone's favorite book is on here and they're gonna say ah! okay uh <laughs> they both die at the end by Adam Silvera so I started this and I don't know what happened I just didn't finish it I'm gonna go back and read it I've heard it's really good I really don't have an excuse it's not that I didn't like it I think I just like got other things in the way, but I did technically DNF this and I have no idea. I don't, what happened. The little bit that I read, I don't remember. So, we'll see. I'll go back to it one day. Ooh, I just saw one that hurts me. <laughs> uh, this one. <laughs> Wonders of the Invisible, Invisible World by Christopher Barzak. Just terrible. I couldn't do it. I wanted to like this book and I still to this day could not tell you what it was about and I made it far into this book like page 214 just terrible like super unclear and confusing writing I don't know I may try to read it again this is nowhere near a priority for me but <laughs> I, I had to stop it was it was not for me. I'm sorry if it's your favorite book. What else? Ah, uh, another Adam Silvera. I, maybe it's just his writing style. I don't know, but... More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. I also got... Oh, look. Oh, what a part of me and my boyfriend. Um, I got to page 39 and put it down and didn't pick it back up. For me, I feel like this one was a slow start. I don't really know. Like, the last thing I remember was, like, some dumb game of tag happening in the city. And I was like, whatever. So, I think the, it was just, it, the momentum died a little too soon for me. And I needed something to, like, hook me to make me sustain the journey through the book. And that was not it. So, sorry. We have Suicide Notes by Michael Thomas Ford. I picked this up because I kind of like ensemble stories um, that have to do with like psych wards or mental illness. I am super into that. Like Ellen Hopkins is a really good um, author for that. Technically she writes in, in verse, but that's okay. Um, this wasn't bad. I just felt like the kid was the main character. He's not a kid, he's a teenager was bratty and annoying and I don't know just to it's from his POV and I just wasn't feeling it I, I do want to go back and read this again I really haven't heard anything about it this was just something I totally random randomly picked up but we'll see again not high up on the list for me currently it uh it ended up in the slush pile next Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut I've never read a Kurt Vonnegut before. Um, I, it's a really short, like old timey book. It's got that old library smell. So it's appealing in many ways, cool cover. Um, I don't know, the story sounded cool, but it says very tough, very funny, sad and delightful, very Vonnegut, the New York Times. Um, I read a little bit of it. Ugh, well, again, the writing, the, I think it jumps in time from what I remember and it just lost me and maybe it's because of me not really reading it thoroughly or something it could be me thing I'm not saying this is a bad book obviously it's not but it lost me uh I would like to read this again I do 
once read this. But when? Couldn't tell you. Ooh, the next one. Okay, this author is so popular in the YA shelf. Like, she is on every bookshelf of every bookstore ever. And I did not like this book. And there were so many things going for it that I should have liked. Like, people with superpowers and superheroes and supervillains. And I... Mm. Renegades by Marissa Meyer and there's like two or three books in this series now so it's it's done well enough I just could not get into it again I think it was a writing style thing for me with this one I do want to try again with this one but I think where did I get to page 111 and just couldn't anymore so sorry Marissa so it's technically middle grade, I think, the Unwanted series by Lisa McMahon. This was a gift and I think it was purchased for me because I like fantasy and I'm I the book that I'm working on that I'm writing for myself, the series, is a fantasy series. So I think this person got this for me because they thought I would enjoy it and for that reason it touched my heart and I would like to read this one day. But oh my god, <laughs> I was so confused and maybe that's just me but I felt like the story was really choppy and all over the place and it just was not for me and I still don't know what it's about could be about dragons like could be about origami birds I couldn't tell you like that's how lost I was it's just I think there were like kids being transported to their death on a school bus and I and it's a long series there's like a ton of books so I do want to revisit this but yeah the Hunger Games meets Harry Potter I think that's accurate especially with the title headings it seems very derivative again sorry if you like this series but like home in the stone mansion with a little illustration like it's, it's very Harry Potter of you let's see Ooh, I don't know how to pronounce this name but the Novice series by Taran Matharu, 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 this series. Uh, picked this up, started it. It was, uh, okay, it wasn't bad. It just lost me. It's one of those things where, like, this is a super popular series, many books in this series. I would like to reread it again. Um, I don't know. It just didn't do it for me, so I put it down and didn't pick it back up. The last few books are either shameful, seriously upsetting, or I don't know. So this book, The White Fox Chronicles by Gary Paulson. This book unintentionally influenced me in a massive way. So when I was younger, like <laughs> many, many years ago, this was the first book I ever picked up from my school's library, like I was in middle school, and tried to read on my own. And I got so far, and I didn't finish this book still. And I <laughs> I actually did like a book report on this, and like did the book report as if I had read it all, and I didn't, I still don't know how this ends. And I have tried so many times since then, since middle school, to reread it and to figure out what happens because I've always had this book. I got it from middle school and then like the school year ended and I never took it back to the library and never got called out for not returning it. It's like they just lost track of the book or something. So I've had this this whole time. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I do want to finish it. It's not that it's bad. It's just... And I, I know it so well, the first part, because I've tried so many times. Like, the main character's name is Cody. His nickname, nickname is the White Fox. It's, like, America in the future. And uh, citizens are in, like, these prison camps. And he tries to escape and go away. And then he there's, like, a, a someone who's brought to the prison camp that's, like, a female. And they're, they, like, fly a plane. And, like, I've just never finished it. So I, this is going to like follow me through the rest of my life until I finish this. This is just like something that haunts me. I'm not upset at this book. I'm upset at myself. Ooh, okay. 
I have not read this. I have tried and my last attempt, oh, which Polaroid is this? Look, picture of Austin. What else we got in here? To-do list. Uh, I made it all the way to page 83 last time I tried in 2020. I had the audiobook and the audiobook just ran out and so I just didn't pick it up. Um, it's really cool. I liked this book. I liked what I read. It's just for me without the assistance of the audiobook I did not want to read this. I feel like the audiobook was done really 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 well and so when I get my hands on a copy of the audiobook again for my library I would like to revisit that and actually finish it. But I don't know. It's a cool book written from the perspective of death and um, I imagine someone's gonna die and it's a very sad book and people said that it's like changed their lives and who knows I could just be holding something that's gonna change my life and I haven't allowed it to yet but I have not finished this. I've tried to read it multiple times. No excuses. I will read this. Mm. Okay, so this one hurts me personally because it is one of my top five, maybe even my top three favorite movies of all time. And I dote on this movie. I tell everyone, like, watch this movie. Watch this movie. And if you've seen any of my videos in the past, you know what I'm talking about. Cloud Atlas. This is the movie, um, cast like the movie promo poster, so it's one of those copies of the book. It's by David Mitchell, by the way. Um, but I picked this up and the first perspective is from like an, uh, not old, he's young in the book. It's from like the 1800s, uh, a British person. And the, the, it's just so dry. It's bone dry. It's, it's drier than the Sahara Desert. And thank God I had an audiobook. And even with the audiobook on double speed, I just could not get through that section fast enough. It was like, I swear to God, so much of this, the first chunk of this book is from that perspective. And I was just like, gotta go. It felt like pulling teeth hearing that audiobook. And I was like, so sad because this is one of the greatest like stories ever. Uh, as far, you know, as far as the movie goes. And I know that's like book tube sacrilegious, but... I do want to read this, like it's important to me to read the source material that inspired one of my favorite movies of all time, but oh. And if I would have not had the audiobook and just had to read this myself, it, it would not, I wouldn't have made it 10 pages into this book, that's how dry it is. So I feel like I'm not really doing any favors for my favorite film, or one of my favorite films of all time, but I'm going to approach it with an open mind and just get through that terrible bone dry Sahara Desert style opening to get to what I know to be a really good story. So stay tuned. And the last one, no surprises, no surprises. I just, when I see this book, I get filled with rage for no reason. It's, ugh. Ugh. I hope you get this message. I, look how far I got. Like, do you see that? Here's the front of the book. There's what I got. So I'd say, what is that? More than halfway through. Which Polaroid is this? <laughs> That's Austin trying to roll his window up with his toe. <laughs> there are Polaroids in like all my books. But this book. Oh so bad. I couldn't do it. Like, so there's like aliens that are going to destroy the planet. And wow. it's, it's very like Sean David Hutchinson's We Are the Ants. Um, still don't know where this went. I just couldn't do it. It didn't capture me at all. I read this while I was at the beach last year. And every time I turned on the audiobook and opened this book, I just, my shoulders slumped. It, it was like, it was worse than doing the dishes. I, and I'm sorry if you like this book. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know if I'm gonna read it again. I just, I see it when I walk by on my shelf or when I think, when anyone asks me, what's that one book that just fills you with rage? It's this book. And I, it's not anything from the subject matter or anything. It's just, it was so DNF-able <laughs> that I DNF'd the hell out of it. And I, <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna pick that up again. 
So those are the books that I DNF'd in 2020. It is quite a long list. I much rather would have preferred to dedicate that time to books that I actually did finish and diving into some more books that I know I would have liked. But you win some, you lose some. Some of those will get a redemption arc. <laughs> some of them will get donated. So those are all the books I DNF'd in 2020. Please don't be mad if one of your books was on there. And also, you should still watch Cloud Atlas, the movie. Uh, I'll let you know about the book in about 10 years when I get to reading it. But for now, the movie, chef's kiss.